In Bitcoin, this is one of the most important things. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, short but powerful video, I will keep it below 10 minutes, I try. One news item, very important educational news item, two charts, amazing charts, that was like three, but two charts that you really need to see because they are very important at this moment in the cycle. And yes, an inspirational quote, short but powerful because my days are filled at the moment with filling courses, etc. for didibambam.me. Now let's jump into that news educational part first. Bam. That educational part today has also to do, of course, with everything last week about Michael Saylor and Bitcoin and self-custody or non-self-custody. Guys, what kind of use case would Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency have if it wouldn't have self-custody? Without self-custody, it is even no crypto. Even the white paper stated a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system. The most important part is peer-to-peer, -peer, not bank-to-bank, -bank, not institution-to-institution, -institution, not intermediate-to-other-intermediate, peer-to-peer, you-to-me, me-to-you, not using intermediates. Bitcoin is decentralizing the world, taking away those intermediates. That is the goal of Bitcoin, blockchain, other cryptocurrencies. Not again to copy that same system where the biggest amount of an asset is in the hands of a couple of centralized entities like the central banks, the governments and huge investment companies. Don't you see this? Don't you see that if we follow that path, we end up exactly where we were before that Bitcoin was invented. I hope this is a lesson that you really start to understand very quickly. It's all about self-custody. That is why we invented hardware wallets. That is why there was invented software wallets. Because you should hold your Bitcoins in your own custody. Not your keys, not your Bitcoins. That is one of the most important slogans for Bitcoin, aside of be your own bank, which of course is directly correlated with not your keys, not your Bitcoins. If you would be buying Bitcoins, all of you would be buying Bitcoins on the bank accounts, they would hold all your Bitcoin. That is an intermediate. If you would buy all your Bitcoins at a spot ETF like BlackRock, they hold all your Bitcoins. They are your intermediate then it's not your Bitcoins. You don't hold the keys, you don't hold your Bitcoins, it is not your Bitcoin. And that's just a copy of the traditional banking system where you put your euros, if you wouldn't have in cash, you are in full control, you have the keys of your cash, the moment you put them on your bank account, they are in full control. You lend your cash, to the bank and they can do whatever they want to do with it. Even when you want to withdraw it, they will be like, ah, no, $250 at a time. I don't know, you cannot uh, withdraw 5K or 10K. That is the result of the traditional system where you put all your beliefs in those banks, in those intermediates like BlackRock, etc. That is exactly why Bitcoin started, to go against all of that. So the lesson for today is that Bitcoin is a decentralized asset that should be used peer to peer, you to me, not with a step in between, because then it's just another fiat currency. That is exactly what we don't want. So don't store your Bitcoins on a bank. So don't buy your Bitcoins at a spot in yet. So don't store the biggest amount of your Bitcoins on an exchange. Huddle them in your own custody. Use a hardware wallet. And all of these hardware wallets are evolving. I just saw an interview of Paul Gauthier. He's the Ledger CEO. He's saying, yes, these ledgers are evolving. We have them with screens now. It's becoming safer and safer. It's more easy to use. They are simplifying the use case. They are simplifying the use case of layer twos, layer threes, whatever that is going to happen in this industry. 
you will be able to do it with a self-custodial wallet like Ledger or Bitbox or any of those others, guys. Please start to understand this. And if you want to even integrate it into your trading life, then you should only be trading on decentralized exchanges. Yes, I talk a lot about Bybit because I love Bybit. It's a great exchange, but it became centralized and you need to do KYC and proof of address. So it's now an exchange where you need to be verified. If you don't want to be verified, there's always options like Blowfin. You don't need to do any verification. And if you don't want to be known at all, and not a depending on any centralized exchange because you are giving your Bitcoins, Ethereum, USDT or other cryptocurrencies to that exchange to be able to use them there. You just use a decentralized exchange, a DEX like Apex Pro. Because then you can just use your hardware wallet, self-custody, connect that to an exchange and trade the same way you normally trade on a normal exchange. But then when that exchange stops to exist, you are in full control of your cryptos, your keys, your crypto. You use them just by connecting your hardware wallet to an exchange with an order book model like Apex Pro. So you will be able to do buy orders, sell orders, leverage, etc. Just like you used on Bybit or Blowfin. You can also do an Apex Pro. Even very soon you will be doing spot swaps on Apex Pro, but that's a news item I will come back later. But if you connect your heart and wallet to that, you're trading in the most safe way. Because whatever happens to Apex Pro, your crypto is in your custody, which means you have full access to the keys, which means you won't be losing your crypto whenever it happens to that decentralized exchange. That is really an important lesson. I know a lot of newcomers did never hear this lesson because they just stepped in using the banks and they were cheering for BlackRock and they're cheering for spot ETFs and they are cheering for the banks now integrating Bitcoin in their apps. That is not me and that is not the fundamental behind Bitcoin because then it just be turns into another shitcoin like the euro and the dollar that is in full control of the banking system. We don't want that. We want the opposite. We want to use Bitcoin as our gateway to freedom not to turn it again into that same system that we already saw that like did not succeed. Fiat currencies are dead. All of your fiat currencies are worthless. Your, your purchasing power has only gone down since you used the US dollar or the euro or any other fiat shitcoin. All of you worldwide, your purchasing power has only gone down. It has never gone up. And for all the Bitcoiners, the purchasing power since its existence in 2009 has only gone up. That is Bitcoin. That is why we say Bitcoin is the king. That can't be too hard to understand. Look at how we did it as a family, converting all our fiat shitcoins into Bitcoin. Our capital keeps growing and we are living a very beautiful life because we are no victims of inflationary rules put on you by the governments, by the central bank, by those intermediates that now want you to buy your bitcoins at them and hold them at them so they can even control that market. That's not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is intended to be peer to peer, you to me no intermediates. That is the news for today and I need to agree with Paul Gauthier, the Ledger CEO, that if there is no custodial service, there is no crypto, no self-custody, no crypto. Then it's just another fiat shitcoin. Self-custody is the most important part of this blockchain industry. Because of that, you have full control on your asset. Because of that, you will be able to send your asset, Bitcoin or whatever other cryptocurrency to whoever you want, whenever you want and how much you want without any intermediate interfering, stopping it, freezing it or whatever else. That is why we invented Bitcoin. To skip that intermediate part of the bank. So why are you so happy now to buy your Bitcoin again at the banks or at a spot ETF? That is not the use case of Bitcoin. Hopefully that is completely clear now. And if you want to have more lessons like that, go now to ddbambam.me and find out why I'm building that beautiful educational platform over there, guys. 
Now let's quickly jump in the charts because the video is already 10 minutes and I promised you below 10 minutes it's going to be 15 minutes. Now jump in the charts. And yes, the first chart for the day, guys, again, that four hour chart, um, as if I have a glass ball, but every time when I predict something, something plays out. I thought you guys, if you fall to this blue line and we can't keep support, we will fall to the yellow line, find support over there. Look that large wick. I was asleep at this wick, but if I would have been awake, I would have opened the trade because that support on a very important level, that dark yellow line over here, a large wick, I would have opened a trade just to take a couple of profits over there because look, we are now again with huge candles up to that uh, the yellow line over here, that um, stepping line. We have a buy signal already, but we need to close the candle above the stepping line. There's blue and yellow in the bottom over here that needs to turn green and here, uh, preferably the green line on top, and here this is already happening. The white line starts to curl up, go sideways now, and the blue line cross that white line. So the beautiful um, situation to open a trade, but this candle needs to close above that yellow stepping line first, and uh, that is around 67,100. At the moment, we are at 67,073, so we are very close, and the candle is gonna close in two hours and 45 minutes, probably in one hour uh, now, after uploading and editing this video but uh, please be aware beautiful trade may be ahead and it could even be the trade that we are waiting for to explode to the next level here of 72k resistance but we need to find liquidity to do that so guys but smoothly in the last weekends a lot of liquidity now if you look at the weekly also there exactly like i told you yesterday we broke that green line we now need to find support on this green line with this next candle look what that body is doing that body is exactly above that green line and that is exactly where it needs to close above if we close above this with a large wick to the bottom so preferably closing around 68 500-ish or something with a tiny body that would be an explosive move in the next week again to the upside so a very positive move on the weekly also the MACD we can see turning a better greener bigger bar over down and the RSI also really nice sideways, so we still have a lot of uh, upward potential there as well, guys. Great charts. Now, keeping it short but powerful because we have two more other charts you need to see today. This is the first one. My face is in the wrong place. There. This is the power law. And the power law is telling us, hey, look where we are at the moment. So we have one year that we go exponential up. It's the bull market. Then we have one year exponential down. It's the bear market. It's to 70% crashes. And then it takes two years that we go alongside that power law, like in between that power law, the purple line and the white line. Every time you can see we, we, we hang around two years. And then again, what do you think what comes after? One year exponential up which could lead to almost 200k if it is up to the power law, which I also say 160. And after that, guys, 2026, it will be one year exponential down. So we are going to take profits around the top, not at the top, around the top. We are going to dollar cost average out of Bitcoin and again into Bitcoin near the bear market bottom, guys. And that bear market bottom is going to be end 2026, beginning 2027. So that is how we are going to play the game. Now, then we have another amazing chart, guys. This chart, yes, my face can be again in the chart. This chart is the Bitcoin price uh, history uh, with a 200-week moving average. As a 200-week moving average is a very important average. That's a purple line. That's mostly the line where we find the bear market bottom and then we stay above it during the bull market. We stay above it during the bull market. Look, we found the bear market bottom a little bit lower even and then, bam, we stay above it. Now we are still above it and we are going to stay above it. We are even going to make a bigger distance above it. That's what I believe. Because look here on the bottom, this is when you see the bull market top at the level 16 over there. This one that was a distribution top, like double top, that was at the level 7 to 8. Now we are at the level 2. We still need to go up to these levels over there to call it a bull market top. And that's going to happen in the next 12 months. It's simple as that. If you don't believe me, don't believe me, don't go into Bitcoin. Just keep buying shitcoins like euro and dollars and make yourself poor because of the inflation. Do what you need to do. But if you want to have a little bit more purchasing power in the next couple of years, eh, I would exchange all your shitcoins, euros and dollars into Bitcoin. And that is how you create purchasing power for the next decade. Now, let's go into the last chart. This is the last chart. I can't make it more clear than this. I think this is the most clear chart 
that you can find at the moment on the internet on where we are on the four year cycle. Just to be clear, this orange line, that one is this cycle where we are now. So this is the halving at point zero. This is where we are now after the halving. This blue, purple and green line is what Bitcoin did after the previous halvings. Hopefully that is clear. Too simple for me. I just want you to understand this. Please understand this. This is very important. We are there. This is what the previous bull cycles did after being and arriving at this point over here. We went massively up. Massively up. That is why I expect of this yellow line to do as well. I expect this yellow line now to go massively up. Even if it only goes up to there, just to be clear, that's the 200k line. This over there is the 200k line. This is 100k. The next dotted line is 200k. If you go a little bit lower, that's at 160k level. I'm telling you, that's not that far away from where we are at the moment. That is not like impossible. I'm going to one time draw again one of the situations that could happen now without my face. Look, it is very simple. If I would draw, and I would draw what I think that could happen, so to my level of the bull market top, we would leave from here, go up a little bit, maybe come down, go up, come down, then into new 2025, go up, go up, go up, go up, a little bit down, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Bull market top here, 60, 160K, bam, come down, come up again, fool you all, bam, come down, and we go into that bear market bottom somewhere there. I think that bear market bottom is too low, to be honest. I think the bear market bow will be around like here, 60K, there somewhere, and from there, sideways, move up again to that next halving over there, here. That is how we will move. That is what I think is the most bearish outcome. Just reaching 160 over there and a bear market bottom around 65K over there. In 2026, 27, and this one in 2025. If we are more bullish, we could go even to 300K over there, but that would mean that the line would be different. Maybe I can do that as well. Maybe I will use another color. Ah, no, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to do it. Now that line is yellowish. <laughs> it's like a, a, a beautiful program to do that. But no, we can even, if we are more bullish, we could go even like steeper, steeper. You know, we can even go, if you go like the previous double top over there, this level, that would be 400K. And then come down, fall down, bear market, and do the same. All possibilities. But this one is enough for me. 160. One, the six zero amazing now i hope you really enjoy those charts so give it a thumbs up now i hope you really enjoy the charts guys yes uh, you need to uh, zoom out when it comes to bitcoin you know bitcoin is a long-term play four year cycles every four years we create a higher new autumn high and we create a higher new bear market bottom that is just how bitcoin works just get used to it it takes four years every time again to see your huge profits sometimes it's shorter depending on when you get into the market for example now if you get into the market it will take another like 12 months to double your capital probably so that's how it works the four-year cycle 12 months steep climb 12 months steep decline two years 24 months sideways slowly moving up 12 months massively up 12 months slowly down again and then again two years 24 months sideways slowly up we are now just up front of those 12 months massively up and also up front of the next 12 months massively down that is where we are in the cycle just before please understand that so this is still a moment that you should be accumulating bitcoin I will tell you when to stop accumulating and when to start selling. If you just start to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, and please watch these videos every day so you're up to date when to buy and when to sell. Short term, beautiful moments to trade again. A lot of volatility in the market means a lot of possibilities to open trades and to close those trades. But that's only when you're a trader. I know that 80% of you guys are investors, so I will focus a little bit more on these investment parts in this video as well, guys. Now, that were the charts. Now let's quickly jump into the last part, the inspirational quote. 
for today, guys, I have a beautiful Thai uh, inspiration quote. I'm not going to pronounce it in Thai because it's like impossible for me, but this is one of the top 10 quotes that they use in Thailand. And one of those top 10 quotes is, happiness is not something ready-made. Happiness is created through your own actions. People often think that happiness is just something that is ready-made and that, you will that will fall out of heaven or that you will just find on any corner on the street or a beach or wherever you are and you think you will find the happiness over there. Happiness is made because of your actions. If you don't act, you will not turn happy. Simple as that. If you keep running the hamster wheel that makes you really unhappy, you will stay unhappy. You need to act. You need to take the first step to break that hamster wheel to turn into a happy person. So happiness is not like ready-made. It's not off the shelves. It's not like, oh, here, you have a present. You are happy now. Nobody in this world can give you happiness like that. You need to take certain actions to become internally happy. That's how simple it is. And of course, if you love somebody really dearly, like I love my wife or my kids, they can make me happy by their actions. It can make me happy, of course, if they have nice actions towards me or towards the world, that can make me happy. But the full control on happiness is within you, because you interpreted those things as something that make you happy. You could also say, ah, why is she again jumping into the pool? No, wow, she's free, she's jumping in the pool, she's enjoying herself. That's how you control that it makes you happy instead of sad. You're splashing too much water outside the pool. Same situation, but unhappy you. You determine if you're happy. She jumps in, makes a bomb, she splashes everything, and you say, wow, that was a big bomb. Man, you got happy. You became happy of the same situation. It can also make you mad. That's the difference. You are in control. Happiness is not something ready-made. It's not given like this. Happiness is all depending on your actions. Now, that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Yes, Didi, you are not able to keep the videos below 10 minutes. Sorry, but I want to mix in the charts as well, and those are important, and those will also take like five to six minutes. Sorry for that, but I wish you an amazing day. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I give it a thumbs up, and see you tomorrow again. Bam.